Welcome back to Miniature Game Montage and another painting for Average Joes. These are my painting guides that's aimed at newer and just average Joe painters like me. You won't find a lot of advanced techniques or airbrushing. I'm just an average Joe attempting to help people get their miniatures to a tabletop standard. Today we're painting some corpse grinders from the Necromunda range. These fierce fighters rule the underhive close combat scene and if I have one word of advice, just try to shoot them. I'm going to be batch painting several of these, so I will be moving through them quickly, and I hope you enjoy. I do prime the models with a gray color, and the first paint that we're going to use is Vallejo's Tan Earth, and I'm going to be looking at the skin tones on these models, getting the chest, getting the heads, faces, any arms that are showing. This particular model has gloves that come up to his elbows. And I'll be painting several of these, but just picking out all of the skin pieces and laying down this base coat. Not worried about making any mistakes, as I have a size 8 brush, I think it is. So just getting this down relatively quickly and moving on to the next color. And that next color will be Vallejo's German Gray. I really like this color because it is not black. It is a very dark gray. And when you apply a wash to it, it does a fantastic job, still allowing you to highlight the color back up relatively easy. Black has an issue with being a very flat color, but I'm just applying this to the pants and to the boots, as well as anything else, the belt that I feel would need to be black on these models. Next, we're going to move to a Vallejo Gunmetal Gray, and you're going to want to use a crappy brush when you're painting metallics. For whatever reason, metallics just have a history of wrecking brushes. So get a crappy brush. I'm going to use this to paint his auto pistol. I'm going to get his sword, as well as a lot of the rings and clasps and certain things around his garments. I'm also going to get this headpiece that he's wearing and this gunmetal color as well. Moving on, we're going to use Vallejo Bronze, and this is what I'm going to use to get a lot of the armor sections for these guys. We will be tinting this down, so don't be surprised when you're putting this color down if it looks very bright. We are going to be tinting this down with a reddish tint, so just bear with me on this. I'm getting the armor here and just working my way around these miniatures. On some of the larger ones, their weapons will require this color if you kind of follow the box art. So it's really just up to you, whatever you want that dark red to be, you want to paint it bronze. Next, I'm going to use a Vallejo Iraqi Sand, and for this, I'm going to be getting a lot of the cloth on these miniatures, and that is around the waist, and these guys in particular have some up around the neck area as well. So I'm going to hit the cloth pieces with Iraqi Sand and move on to the next color. And that next color is Vallejo's Leather Brown. I'm going to use this just to get some of the leather pieces, such as straps. You could use this for the belt. You could even use this for the glove or the boots if you wanted to bring some more color in there as well. But just work your way around getting those browns down. So for some of the bigger guys, I do use this Vallejo game color. It is a bone white, and I put their helmets, the bones that are hanging out, and any skulls that they may have are done in this color. And that's it for the base coats. And if your model looks not very good like these, that's okay, because we are going to use an average painter's best friend, which is a wash, and then we are going to highlight these models back up from there. So the base coats are down. You can tidy up any mistakes or anything where you went too fast, maybe made some errors. This is now a perfect time to clean those up, and we're going to move into the wash stage. And the first wash that's up is the Reichlin Flesh Shade from Citadel. This is Games Workshop, obviously. And we are going to apply this all over the skin colors. And I also hit the armor colors with this as well, where we painted bronze. You can actually, depending on what kind of color you want this armor to be, this will give you a lighter red. I do like this wash because there's a red tint in it. But you can hit the armor and highlight from this if you want. We are going to be going a little bit darker for mine, and we're going to use another wash called called Caraburg Crimson, but you can see this wash automatically start to tint that armor down. And while that dries, let's go ahead and move to another wash, Agrax Earthshade by Citadel. 
and this we're going to be focusing on the cloth pieces. You could do skin in this as well if you don't want to do the Reichland flesh shade. So just cloth and anything else that you may want to have a brownish type of tint to it. The next wash is Nuln Oil by Citadel, and on this one we're going to hit the pants, anything that's black, and also the silver metallics such as the bone sword as well as the pistol, and I did do one piece of armor on his arm in silver, also that piece around the face as well. All of that gets Nuln Oil. All right, while all of that dries, let's really bring some red to these armor pieces. Caraberg Crimson by Citadel, this is a red wash. And we are going to be focusing on the armor pieces. Anywhere where we painted that bronze color earlier, we are going to slap Caraberg Crimson on it. This could be on some of the weapons for the bigger guys. And just anywhere where you have put that bronze color and you want to tone this down. Now we need to let these shades fully dry, give those about 30 minutes depending on how heavy you put them on there, and then we are going to do a, another coat, once that coat is 100% dry, another coat of Caraberg Crimson. And what this is going to do is this is going to give you the final product where this armor is that really tinted red kind of color. So let it fully dry and then apply another coat of Caraberg Crimson all over those bronze pieces again and you will really see this product come together. And once all of that dries, we are ready to start highlighting this guy back up, back with Vallejo Tan Earth. And we are going to start to highlight the skin. And man, I'm just not a very good painter when it comes to skin tones. I just use what I have and I actually forget a color in this step. But bringing back that tan earth, you want to be sure that you avoid the recesses and you want to treat each muscle separately. So starting with the chest, just start at the top, working your way down, you're going to cover 95% of every single muscle with this color, but be sure that you don't go into the recesses. Try to leave a little line there to give you some definition from where that wash has settled. And here's just a quick example on some of these bigger guys that have some larger arm muscles. Again, treating each muscle separately if you can, starting highlights at the top, the way that light would hit it, working your way down to the bottom. Since we're working with a base color and bringing this back up to that color, you're still going to cover the majority of the muscle, but you want to be sure that you just leave some lines in there to provide some definition. So with most paint jobs, you're working with three paints for a color up scheme. And flesh tones are no different. I've got three flesh tones that I'm working with. So I mix in a drop of the Vallejo Tan Earth and one drop of the Vallejo Dark Flesh, which is my mid-tone. I've got a barbecue skewer and some water, so I roll that in with one drop, mix it together thoroughly, and this will make the next highlight that I do on the skin not so stark in contrast to what I already have down. So using the mixture of these two paints, I'm just gonna go back over the skin again highlighting each muscle, this time getting about 90% of the muscle and being sure that I avoid any of the recesses. Now, as a side note, if you really want to know how to paint flesh tones with a more advanced level, Squidmore Miniatures, I believe, has a tutorial out there on painting flesh tones. I've watched that several times, and that's what I try to apply. I don't get the result that he does, obviously, but it is worth checking out so you can kind of learn how this process works. All right, next up, you're going to go to your mid-tone, whatever that is. For me, it's Vallejo's Dark Flesh, and we're just using this straight this time, so no mixture, and going back over the muscles, each one at a time, starting from the top. This time, you probably want to cover about 80% of the muscle, working your way down from the top to the bottom, not touching any of the recesses. Now, as you're going through this process, obviously don't forget the face as well. A lot of the prominent areas that need highlighting up, like the chin, the nose, the jaw bones, all of that, be sure that you're highlighting those appropriately as you go. All right, and doing this method one more time, we are now going to mix the mid-tone with the highlight tone. For me, this is Vallejo's Dark Flesh and Vallejo's Flat Flesh. So mixing those up just as we did before, one drop at a time with a little bit of water, and then going back over the skin tones again, this time not covering up that mid-tone completely. And this will be the final highlight that we do before just doing the edge highlights with the flat flesh. 
Now lastly, we will pull out the final highlight color, which is Vallejo Flat Flesh, and we're just going to be picking out high areas, prominent points, uh, right before you get to a recess to really bring out the contrast. You also want to be sure that you're getting the face, get the nose, the chin, get above the eyes, anywhere where you want light to be striking the model. This is your final highlight color. All right, with the skin tones good, we are going to move into highlighting the rest of the model and call these good. I'm going to use Vallejo's World War II Field Gray, and this is just a gray color. You can use any gray that you have, and I'm going to be focusing on the high areas on the pants. You could also use this with a dry brush on the pants to really bring out a lighter gray color uh, on the pants and any black areas you may have. And now moving back to Vallejo Iraqi Sand and just touching on the cloth areas, getting those high points out, again, not touching the recesses, just bringing some more light back to the cloth areas, paying particular attention to the raised areas and the folds. Next biggest technique for newer painters is going to be a dry brush, getting most of this wiped off in a paper towel and then coming back in. This is natural steel from Vallejo, so I've rubbed most of the paint off on a paper towel and I'm just coming around the gunmetal areas and giving that a quick dry brush and this is going to pick out all of the high spots, giving them a highlight of this natural silver and leaving the re recesses that gunmetal color. I will do a similar technique with Vallejo Game Color, Bone White, getting back into the bones and skulls and things like that. I actually go in and tidy up a lot where the wash had pulled in some areas, just using the regular paint and brush to help tidy some of this up, but just really focusing on the high points and bringing some highlights to the horns and any bone areas. I will go into the face on some of these miniatures with that bone white as well to pick out teeth and different horns and things that they have in the face area as well. A good thing to remember, if you do happen to mess up, just dot some wash back in there and let it dry and you'll be right back to the stage where you left off. Last off, we're going to work on the base, and if you've watched any of my painting videos for Necromunda, I use a black base coat, and then I use Vallejo's Mahogany Brown. I dry brush that onto the base and then I will go back over that with some silver. And in this one, I've started to do a little bit of extra. I'm gonna add some hazard stripes here. So real quick on some of these bases, I'm gonna grab some Citadel Averlin Sunset. This is a good base yellow to use. I'm just gonna get some stripes on here and color those in. I will do the same for some German gray. Give those a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade to kind of tone those down, and the bases are done. The miniatures are done. All that's left is to give them a coat of clear varnish, and these guys will be ready. Now, as an after step to these, I won't do this to mine, but if you have any Blood for the Blood God technical paint, be sure you put your clear coat varnish on first, and then apply that technical paint afterwards. You'll really see the difference if you put it on before. It'll get toned down pretty heavily by the varnish, and uh, just be sure that if you really want that bright looking blood to be on your weapons or on the cloth, just be sure you do that after the varnish. But that's it for these corpse grinders. They're ready for a battle report coming soon. I really hope you enjoyed this painting guide. I know that I'm not the best painter out there and there's tons of content creators that do it much better than I do, but I am just the average Joe painter. So if you're kind of in that boat and looking for just a normal style of painting, then these videos are for you. If you like this video, be sure you leave a like. I would like to say thank you to my 2021 Coffee Supporters Club. Your names are on the screen now. Thank you so much and we will see you in the next one. Take care. Crap.